This is my drift car, it's an 87 Trans Am. I'm going to be going in depth about what I actually did for all the angle on this car. It turns a bit more than stock and it's decent. So a couple people were curious so I figured just make a breakdown video about suspension and what I did for the whole setup and everything. So stay tuned for that, it'll be out soon. Alright, so if you're like me and you have no idea how these nine bolts actually come apart, this is what the video is for. So this one is out of a third generation F body. It has a 327 in it, so it's the three series carrier. All you're gonna wanna do is get one of the axles and put them from the underside of this. Slip this on top of that axle with this side facing up. There's gonna be these 7 16 bolts that you're gonna wanna take out all around this. Do them like even, even like star pattern up because there's springs inside and when you loosen them they're going to want to walk that surface upwards. So when you get all of them out it's going to like spring it up. So you take off this cap, put it somewhere, and this is what you're going to basically see inside of it. So this is one half of the carrier with the ring gear on this side and there's a cone that you're first going to see. This is what you don't want to look at when you pull it apart. This cone is completely just destroyed. It's eaten into the carrier on that little indented portion and the whole outside ridge of this ate into the carrier itself. So these cones are basically trashed and so is this carrier unless I get it totally remachined, get new cones and go through the whole hassle of that and I'm not going to do it. So. This is also going to be inside the cone. I don't know what this gear is called, but it sits just like this. And if you can see in there, there's splines for the axle to sit. So keep in mind when you're putting this back together, have an axle slip up from the bottom through this and then reassemble the cone and then this on top of it. Then there's these little like axle cover things and they're going to have a little like indentation on one side and you want to make sure that this is facing the spider gears so when you put your axle in it sits in this little recessed spot right there so keep that in mind when you're putting it all back together so here's what you're going to see this is the meat and potatoes of everything so you have your spider gears here and there's four of these that spin independently of each other on this gear right here and that one right there and these are both sitting in those cones that wear down so these have to be spinning like pretty well. If you don't have them spinning, I don't know what's going to happen. I have no idea about these dips at all. So these springs are going to be sitting in that little channel right here. So there's a big one, a medium sized one, and then there's going to be a really small one also. So this is the same thing. There's this little axle cap. It's facing up towards the spider gears. That's extremely important. So don't mess that up. There's this other gear, and then here's the next cone. So this one is also destroyed, just like the first one was. I think this diff has over like 200,000 miles on it, and it's never been serviced. So it's a little past its life, and the five previous owners before I got this thing obviously abused the car a good amount. So it's kind of trashed. So I'm going to try to figure out a way to weld this thing shut. I was thinking about welding the cones to the carrier, but then I realized I can't really do that. Because if I weld the cones to the carrier, and then I weld this gear to the cone, I was also thinking about welding these spider gears to that lower gear in there. And then I realized I wouldn't be able to actually open this again ever or even put it back together if I did it that way so I'm not exactly sure what to do I don't know if the cone ever spins around in there I'm not too sure I mean it looks like there's lines that go in a circle on here and in the carrier from where it wore down so this might spin around I don't really know but when these go bad and need a rebuild usually people shim these things so you put the shims in the cone right here on top and it goes against this surface that sits right there. So that's what pushes this up and then gets you a posi again. So 
I'm not sure if I should just weld this gear to that cone and then just leave it in here. So if I ever had to pull it back apart, I could still do that. Either way, the cones are garbage and so is the carrier. So I don't really know if I'm gonna have to keep servicing this thing anymore after this. If I just weld it and call it a day. But that's basically it. That's everything that's inside this diff. It's not too complicated. I saw like three or four videos on YouTube kind of explaining how this worked, like coming apart and putting it together and everything. But I couldn't really find any like super helpful ones with good camera views. Like there's always a camera on a tripod like four feet away and you can't see anything that's going on. So when you're reassembling this, um, make sure to put that axle through the end first because remember these are splines so you want to put them over that axle and then the gear is also splined so same thing get those lined up get your little axle boot thing make sure this cap is facing up and then you can get your spider gears drop them right on top of it and when you mesh them together with all the teeth sometimes it doesn't really like to sit down in place like there's, it's hard to see, but there's a little gap right here. I don't know why it does that, but if you just flip it 45 degrees, now it's sitting perfectly flush. So, kind of weird, something to look out for. Don't just put it together and then call it good because it might not seat properly when you're putting the case back together. The springs have to get preloaded down too. So when you put everything on, everything's not gonna sit like flush you're gonna have to use these bolts and slowly go around in a circle or a star or whatever and snug the case down and then you torque the bolts. Same with this. Um, at this point, I don't really know the best way to put it back together. I'm thinking about just putting it on its side and then having another axle come in through this direction so I can put the cone and the gear on first and then just kind of slide them together. So I might do that, I'm not too sure. I'm still waiting on my welder to come in before I can even keep going with this whole thing. But if you don't use those axles, um, the splines might not line up and they're also not gonna line up with the end that sits in this little channel here. So there's three different places the axle must sit and go through. This first spline here, the second one there, and then it has to sit like this. So if this cone is like, think about it like if it was centered here but it was like ever so slightly off like that, it's not going to sit flush and your axle won't go all the way in and you're going to have to pull everything back apart to fix this. So I'm probably just going to put them on its side like I said and just shove them together. But essentially this is how it'll fit back on. This one, see how like it's super up away from the gears? So when you put the case back on, when you're tightening it down, that's what's actually going on is they start to mesh and then the springs seat all the way down. And then these little like axle two thingies caps will sit inside the spider gear hole. And that's how it all goes back together. Um, there's a forum on thirdgen.org that has like torque specs and how to shim these and like preload them and all that fancy stuff. So I'll link it down below. Um, if you need to get new cones or a new carrier or any parts for this, you can get them from a website called 9bolt.com. Super helpful. It's um, apparently some dude that lives in the United States but has a hookup in Australia. So he gets them just imported in because that's the only place where this diff really could get serviced from. So that's basically it. This is how it's going to go back together. And you just slowly tighten the bolts all the way down and then just put these little caps back on and slide it back on the car. So hope you enjoyed, hope this helped somebody out there. Um, if this works the way I'm thinking of welding it, I'll make another video eventually if it did work or if it didn't work. And I don't know when that's gonna happen. Could be a month, could be a year. So we'll see, I'll update it eventually. But yeah, cool. Thanks for watching. I hope you like learned something or enjoyed this video at all. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. And yeah, cool. Have a good one.